Hey guys, I'm here with Jason. Um, I'm actually going to take him to my friend Justin's house that uh, he doesn't know uh, I'm bringing Jason. So Justin, neither one know they're meeting. Uh, I wanted to come see his Sonic collection, so I thought, what's the best way but to bring the actual person, Jason? On this rainy, dark, dreary, thundering, lightning day, we're just going to travel to a stranger's house and go check out his very <laughs> impressive Sonic collection. So this yeah. better be worth it, man. Yeah, uh, he doesn't know if he's going to get killed or actually <laughs> if he's meeting a fan. So. I, I do have the amulet with me, so I feel protected. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, all right, all right, we're here. with. Uh, we're going to go knock on the door. Now, he doesn't know we're coming, so uh, it's going to be a surprise for him as well. So, uh, uh, welcome to the House of Horrors. No, I'm I just hope, kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hope you like surprises. All right, let's. All righty. Hey, hey Justin. Hey, Justin. I brought Jason. I brought Jason hey, with me. Sonic the Hedgehog How's here. Going? Good man. How are you? Good. What are you doing here? I'm just walking into your house uninvited. <laughs> Come on in. I, di I didn't want to tell you that he was coming. Uh, you know, we we're just we happen to be in Florida, and we heard you have one of the most impressive Sonic collections, I don't know, in existence. Thank you. So you know, I've heard that I've heard that many times, and then it turns out to be a closet. So we came here to actually, you know, do the taste test and see if if yours is one of the ultimate collections. Sure, man. Let's go. I'll show you. Let's check it out. All right, guys. As I said, on this dark and dreary day, we don't know what could happen. The unexpected is what we should expect. That's the problem. Thank you for talking about it. All right. So far, so good. Clean house. No knives. Right up here. Classic room on the left. Modern room on the right. OK. All right, so you weren't kidding. Uh, I feel like I'm. Whew, I feel like I'm in a booth right now at Comic Con. This is this is insane. I mean, look at this. Look at all of these. The Total Sonic X collection. You've got Sonic slot machine. You've got a, a console. You've got a cabinet. Can you tell us like the history of behind this stuff? Like, how did you acquire this? Uh, well, I've been collecting for 28 years now. Um, a lot of the stuff I actually found super cheap uh, back in the day. People getting rid of uh, demo units. Wow. Uh, arcade shutting down, bowling alleys, Dreamcast. Mm -hmm. What What initially got you into Sonic? What was it about Sonic that made you such a, a fan? I loved the games, and then started buying the comic books. Kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. Man, I mean, look at this. You got Sonic popcorn, or you know, something. It's mm -hmm. it's Sonic Gunna. <laughs> You got plushies. You've got, uh, I mean, a whole shelf of plushies over here. Pops. I mean, what don't you have? Is there is there sort of like a holy grail uh, item that nobody seems to to know about? My holy grail is the tenth anniversary Dreamcast, tenth anniversary Sonic Dreamcast. And you haven't you haven't acquired that yet. Very few collectors have them, and they're insanely expensive. Wow. Now I have to I have to ask you what is the rarest piece in your collection that I don't know maybe people don't believe exists or. Can't um, find. Well, I'll show you something cool over here. Right. I hope it's Ben Schwartz. <laughs> Up here, there's a Sonic and Garfield pack for this PC. Look at this! It's you know, Sonic, Sonic and Garfield pack. <laughs> I mean, does anybody know about that? Nobody, seen... nobody believed me they existed for a long time, so I, so one popped up on eBay last year. Get out, man! Mm -hmm. That's insane. Saw it as a kid in Best Buy, didn't buy it. Nobody believe me. Sonic with, with Homer and, and the Flintstones <laughs> and Ed Grimley. <laughs> now, this is cool down here. I see there's a box of uh, Honey Nut Cheerios with Sonic and the Honey Nut Cheerios B, and I think that's. This is pretty significant because. <laughs> this right here is pretty significant. The Honey Nut Cheerios B with Sonic because I not only voice Sonic, but. I voiced the Honey Nut Cheerios B in an episode of David Letterman back in like 2011. They couldn't find the actual guy, or it was like too early in California, so they said, "Hey, can can one of your guys do it?" So I did both of these guys as well. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, you have an entire rack of clothing. You have a Sonic train. This is this is crazy. What, you know, Sonic stamps? Does that does the world know that Sonic stamps exist? If not, they should. <laughs> What what started the collection for you? What was your first first piece? First piece was a comic. Um, found it in Toys R Us. Uh, I was spending some birthday money, looking for a. Uh, remember Beast Wars? 
just no. came out with the movie, Transformers? No. Uh, well, I collected those toys at the time. Uh, my mom actually found the comic, and she's like, hey, isn't this that uh, character from that game you're always playing? I said, yep. So she got that, and uh, the next day went looking for more comics. I didn't even know comic stores existed at the time. Yeah. Um, then found, like, Sonic McDonald's toys, um, little candy things, and it just kind of snowballed. Wow. That's, that's insane. It really took off when I discovered eBay. Oh, and eBay was sort of the, the holy, not the holy grail, but the, uh, uh, the, the one-stop shop for all of these, yep. all of these items. And are you are an artist yourself? Are you sketching? I'm not. No. <laughs> That's the one thing I've been so amazed to find going to the Comic Cons and, and these store appearances that so many people are, they're so artistic. Mm -hmm. They, they, re they're really skilled at what they do. People will bring me up drawings, they're like, oh, I just sketched this while I was waiting in line for you. And I didn't trace it, I didn't look at anything else and just, they have something like so unique, you yep. know? Yep, there's some good ones out there. And just the amount of Sonic fans that I connected with over the years. Oh, all yeah. around the world. That's another thing, the community seems pretty tight knit. Oh yeah. You know, uh, very uh, genuine people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I haven't met, so far, I've, all the people I've met, uh, everyone's been really wonderful. They are, you know, and, and, and you know, genuinely enthusiastic about Sonic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, wow, I mean, what else can you tell me about this? You know, what? What else is there to know? Um, they make Sonic snowboards. <laughs> I live in Florida, but I got two snowboards. Wow. It's one there. Uh, I'll that to the modern room. Oh, yeah. We got, and right over here, got all these, all these boards. You can look down here. We even have a Werehog board. That's, that's awesome. Yep. And this is actually pretty new. Motorcycle helmet. Oh, yeah. Look at that motorcycle helmet. I'll show you something cool over here. Tony Hawk signed that board. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome, right there, dude. Wow, look at this. This worn by James Marsden in the first Sonic movie. Not a replica. Oh, shit, sorry. Not a replica. And the actual shirt. Now, how did you get? How did you acquire that? eBay, through a company that buys out lots from movie studios. Yeah. And it's, uh, that that particular scene where he wore it with uh, when he first meets uh, Jim Carrey's Doctor Robotnik. Oh, wow. Have you put it on? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's way too small for me. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that'd be the first thing I would do. If I bought like an Elvis jumpsuit, that's Elvis is my Sonic. If I bought a jumpsuit and it was in a case, I'd break that case right open, put it on. And going back to the snowboard thing, that's the other one I was telling you about. Oh, look at this. Wow. Olympic Games. Well, and that's another game. Yeah, that's one of the games I did. Mm -hmm. Actually, just to, you know, be completely honest with you, uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics is the only game that I voice that I've ever played. Oh wow. I haven't played any of the other ones yet. 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 Start with 06. <laughs> Start with 06. Some people would say stay away from 06. Uh, what, what was your opinion of 06? I think it could have been a lot better if it wasn't so buggy and rushed. That's that's what I've heard, yeah. How about uh, have potential? Yeah. What was your favorite of, of the games that I voiced? Honestly, Sonic Rush. Really? Mm -hmm. No kidding. That's, I loved it. I think you're the first person to say that. It's usually either people like uh, Unleashed, or um, surprisingly enough, 06, people, you know, I will get fans who love that game. I mean, streamers, they play 06 all the time just because people like seeing, you know, how wild it can get with oh. the glitches and the insane storyline. People that never uh, played the game before just can't believe, you know, that storyline, like, goes places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the other one, you know, the very first uh, the very first game I played was, uh, or uh, the very first game I voiced was uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. And when they brought the script in, it was like this this thick. It was like a phone book. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, because there were so many storylines. But this is great. Look at just just imagine this hanging here, or imagine my whole body hanging here. <laughs> Dude, amazing, amazing stuff. Justin, this has thank been you. it's been a pleasure making this detour to your place, man. I'm glad we could come in and, and surprise you and, yeah, and thank you so much. Yeah, check out this awesome, awesome collection. This guy, the real deal, Justin, right here.